Welcome to St James's online. It's good to be able to worship not only by ourselves but in the company of many other people. Special welcome if you're joining us for the first time and we hope that you enjoy and gain from being with us. And of course a welcome to those of us who would normally be meeting in our church building in Hampton Hill. It'd be great if you'd let us know that you're with us by using the chat in Facebook if you're watching the live stream. Recently I heard someone say that the best compliment for this kind of thing is to share it with somebody else. So perhaps after the service, if you'd like to, uh, share it with a friend or relative. Today, on the 7th of June, we are celebrating Trinity Sunday. We're celebrating that God is rich in relationship, complex beyond our understanding and unified in his purposes of love and grace. Behind me is a picture of Waswater in the Lake District. I picked it because there are three peaks that together complete the end of the lake. Shall we begin our service together? In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. And so we sing a hymn, a setting of Psalm 104, that sketches out the complexity and wonder and magnificence of God. I worship the King, all glorious above. Holy, 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 when our eyes have seen the Lord of hosts, we echo the words of Isaiah, Woe is me, I am doomed. We long for the fire of God's cleansing to touch our unclean lips, for our iniquity to be removed and our sins wiped out. So we meet Father, Son and Holy Spirit with confession on our lips. Father, you come to meet us when we return to you. Lord, have mercy. 
Lord, have mercy. Jesus, you died on the cross for our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Spirit, you give us life and peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us sing with joy, Gloria in the highest. The Collect of Trinity Sunday. Holy God, faithful and unchanging, enlarge our minds with the knowledge of your truth and draw us more deeply into the mystery of your love that we may truly worship you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Jackie is going to read to us our epistle reading. And then Sylvie will bring us the Gospel. A reading from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 13, verse 11 to the end. Finally, brothers and sisters, farewell. Put things in order. Listen to my appeal. Agree with one another. Live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory be to you, O Lord. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always, to the end of the age. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Let's pray. 
May I speak and may we hear in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. How many of you would say you truly understand electricity, yet all of us depend on it? How many of us understand as something as mundane as digestion, but we have our daily bread? How many of us truly understand something as personal as conception, but we are alive because of it? I don't want to spend any time setting out the doctrine of the Trinity. Let us just say that because God is truly one, uh, yet we know him to exist in three ways, that is enough for now. But how, is the question for this morning, how does that idea shape our thinking and our behaving? Alongside the very human God, Zeus and the rest, Aristotle proposed that the real supreme being was a beautiful, indivisible and unchanging thing, the unmoved mover, distant, aloof, uncaring. This divinity, very like the impersonal Star Wars force, many people carry this idea of God in their heads, the absent clockmaker. Now that is not the God of the Bible. The God the people of the Old Testament encountered was interested in them, interacted with them, challenging, encouraging, nurturing, discipling them. They experienced God in wind and fire, in silence, embodied alongside them. And these experiences were filled out when women and men met Jesus of Nazareth and then were immersed in the Spirit when they realised that they knew God in three manners, above them, beside them, within them, they also uncovered an understanding that there were relationships between the persons of God. The Father loved the Son. The Son obeyed the Father. The Father and the Son sent the Spirit. The Spirit testified to the Son. And so they learned that before the world began, when all there was was God, he was self-sufficient and he was still loving without us loving within himself and so I say that reality is about relationships God is relational and God made creation and ecosystems and humanity as its high point to live in communities and in relationship with him now we have known long about the pain of loneliness about a people who don't see others from day to day, days on end. And recently in lockdown, we've learned ourselves perhaps how we miss people, friends, relatives, neighbours even, and they're not even screen presences are enough. So much more goes on in a conversation than can be represented by technology. Sandra and I were able to celebrate our son's engagement but it was dampened by not being able to hug him and his new fiance. Funerals I've taken have been stilted and awkward when people can't be close, embrace or hold each other. Janet's now going to lead our prayers. God of peace and love, we pray for the church throughout the world. We offer prayers for Justin, our Archbishop, and Sarah and Graham, our bishops. Here at St James's, we thank you for the ongoing ministry of Derek, Jackie, Julian, and Sylvie, who work so hard to keep the parish activities alive and support us all while normal church worship is not possible. We also give you thanks for the huge contribution that Scott and Danny have made to our church during their time in this country. May our love and gratitude travel with them as they return to the USA. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. God of peace and love, we pray for the world you have created and entrusted to our stewardship we have failed to care for it and for each other. 
unfair distribution of resources, injustice and inequality blight the lives of people in, around the globe. Guide, we pray, the thoughts and actions of those in position of flat power and influence to build a fairer, more equitable world. At this time, we think of the unrest spreading from the United States and of the International Vaccination Conference to advance the existing vaccination programme and develop protection against the COVID-19 virus. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. God of peace and love, in Hampton Hill we think of our local community of shops and businesses which face uncertain futures. We pray for people who are worried about their jobs and their homes. We ask your blessing on families trying to manage childcare during the patchwork reopening of local schools and to prepare their children to cope with a changed environment. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. God of peace and love. We pray for those who are suffering illness or distress in mind or body. In our concern about the current pandemic, let us not forget those who struggle with chronic illnesses or disabilities, who are finding it difficult to get the care and support that they need. We give thanks for the health professionals, caregivers and voluntary supporters who are placing their own health and safety at risk through their tireless work. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, we commend to your keeping those who have died in the faith. We trust that through belief in your Son, you have opened to each of us the way to eternal life. We think especially of Michael Futter, whose funeral will take place on Monday, and in a moment's quiet, of others known to us. We pray for the friends and families who have lost loved ones in these difficult times when we cannot mark their passing as we and they would have wished. May they rest in the blessing of your peace. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Earlier in the service I referred to the vision of Isaiah in the temple when he hears the angels sing, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. We're going to sing a version of that now. It's our hymn, uh, Bright the Vision That Delighted Once the Sight of Judah's Seer.
Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, give us the bread of everlasting life and make us branches of the true vine. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord. All that you reveal of your glory, the same we believe of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, without any difference or inequality. We, your holy church, acclaim you, Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. Three persons we adore, one in being and equal in majesty, and so with angels and archangels, with cherubim and seraphim, we sing forever of your glory. How wonderful the work of your hands, O Lord! As the mother tenderly gathers her children, you embraced a people as your own. When they turned away and rebelled, your love remained steadfast. From them you raised up Jesus our Saviour, born of Mary to be the living bread, in whom all our hungers are satisfied. He offered his life for sinners, and with a love stronger than death he opened wide his arms on the cross. On the night before he died, he came to supper with his friends, and taking bread, he gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Father, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. We remember his dying and rising in glory, and we rejoice that he intercedes for us at your right hand. Pour out your Holy Spirit as we bring before you these gifts of your creation. May they be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy things in your presence, form us in the likeness of Christ and build us into a living temple to your glory. Bring us at the last with all the saints to the vision of that eternal splendour for which you have created us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, with whom and in him, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. Being made one by the power of the Spirit, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us the day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. We pray. Almighty and eternal God, you have revealed yourself as Father, Son and Holy Spirit and live in reign in the perfect unity of love. Hold us firm in this faith that we may know you in all your ways and evermore rejoice in your eternal glory who are three persons yet one God now and forever. Amen. Thanks be to you, our Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits which you have given us, for all the pains and insults which you have borne for us. Most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may we know you more clearly, love you more dearly and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. Amen. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. The Lord Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, the Holy and Undivided Trinity, guard you, save you and bring you to that heavenly city where he lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.
Hello again. Uh, thanks to all involved in creating our service this week. Uh, Tom and the choir, Jackie, Sylvia and Janet. And of course thank you for being part of our congregation. A reminder that if you want to come over to Zoom for coffee, the link is in the chat now. And on the subject of coffee, please note that the Vicarage Coffee Morning is on Wednesday this week, as I have a funeral on Thursday morning. On Wednesday evening we have another session of the prayer course and we're going to think about contemplation. Uh, you're very welcome to join us even if you've not been before. The link was in the email. Thank you for all your generous gifts to Danny and Scott this past few weeks uh, and your kind words to them. I know that they're very touched and grateful. Coming last of all to the peace. A reminder to share the peace with two or three others, to bless them with a greeting of peace. Not simply the screen, but think of a neighbour, a colleague, a friend, um, someone from St James, to wish them God's peace. So together. Peace to you from God our Heavenly Father. Peace from his Son Jesus Christ, who is our peace. Peace from the Holy Spirit, the life giver. The peace of the triune God, be always with you, and also with you. May God bless and keep you this week.